Welcome to some ideas you didn't hear at the Republican and Democratic conventions. Both parties spent their time blaming each other for the fix we're in and offering themselves as the cure. But we've been governed for years now by one or the other of them seesawing back and forth and controlling Congress and the White House. So self-absorbed and corrupted by money that neither seems willing or able to cope with reality or even to grasp what's happening to everyday Americans. By their very nature, neither party is capable of providing the radical critique we need, a blunt, even brutal assessment of a political system so dysfunctional as to call into question the survival of democracy. For that, we need independent voices and third parties. So here we go. Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont is the longest serving independent in the history of Congress. 16 years in the House of Representatives, five now in the Senate. Before he went to Washington, he served four terms as mayor of Burlington, Vermont, during which time the city was recognized as one of the most livable in America. I am here to take a stand against this bill, and I'm going to do everything I can to defeat this bill. You may recall what happened two years ago when Senator Sanders, having finished his usual Vermont breakfast of oatmeal and coffee, walked onto the floor of the Senate and began speaking. What our job is, is to appeal to the vast majority of the American people to stand up and to say, wait a minute, I don't want to see our national debt explode. I don't want to see my kids and grandchildren paying higher taxes in order to give tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires. He spoke on for eight and a half hours. We should be embarrassed, Mr. President. Castigating the agreement President Obama and the Republicans had made to extend the Bush tax cuts for the ultra-rich, lower their estate taxes, and jeopardize the future of the Social Security Trust Fund by diverting revenue away from it to other purposes. We have got to stand tall and draw a line in the stand and simply say enough is enough. Around 7 that evening, Bernie Sanders finished, and what happened next was phenomenal. The Senate server, overwhelmed, went down, crashed. The switchboards were jammed, and like sparks from 100,000 watchfires lighting up the distant hills and hollows, his words flew across the country. That speech is now this book, entitled The Speech. I spoke with Senator Sanders earlier in the week. Good to have you. Great to be with you, Bill. I watched the Democratic Convention, as perhaps you did, and I heard all the speeches about opportunity and solidarity, and I saw that vast array of faces of every color, every age, every gender. And I thought, there are still two Democratic parties in this country, the party out across the country of everyday folks like Michelle Obama's parents working paycheck to paycheck, and then there's the Washington Democratic Club, the corporate lawyers, the lobbyists, the Wall Streeters like Robert Rubin and, 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 and Peter Orzek. And I was wondering as I watched, if Obama wins re-election, which party goes back to the White House with him? The party of the country or the party of the club? Well, we certainly hope it will be the party of the country, the party of 25 million Americans without any jobs, the party of people struggling to keep their heads above water the party of the people who want to see health care for all of us. But there is no question, Bill, of the enormous uh, impact that big money has, certainly on the Republican Party, but on the Democratic Party uh, as well. And I fear very much that unless we galvanize public opinion, unless we create the kind of progressive grassroots movement, uh, the big money interest uh, will continue to dominate. Tell me how that money works. I mean, you've been on the inside 20 some odd years, as I said. How does it actually work? We hear money in politics. Well, this is how it works. Uh, and, and this is what people do not appreciate. And it's true for Republicans and Democrats as well. You do not know how many hours every single week, how many hours every single day, people walk into the Democratic Senate Campaign Committee or the Republican Committee, and you know what they do? They dial for dollars. They dial for dollars, hour after hour after hour. Who are they calling? They're calling a list of people who have money. That's who they're calling. And what happens when you do that day after day, month after month, your worldview becomes shaped by those people. And most of the money coming into your campaign coffers comes from those people, and you begin representing their perspective. Well, there are more, it's more than that, isn't it? Because you just released a 
long report on the billionaire Absolutely. pouring money into the Absolutely. System. We have right now, and this should frighten every American, as a result of this disastrous Citizens United decision, we're looking now at people uh, like the Koch brothers putting in one family, $400 million, Adelson worth $20 billion, putting in $100 million. We have over 23 billionaire families making large contributions, and I think that's a conservative number. So what you are looking at is a nation with a grotesquely unequal distribution of wealth and income, tremendous economic power on Wall Street, and now added to all of that is you have the big money and trust, the billionaires and corporations now buying elections. This scares me very much, and I fear very much that if we don't turn this around, Bill, we're heading toward an oligarchic form of society. But the people who are in charge of the system and could therefore change it are the people who benefit from the Absolutely. dialing for dollars. So what's the solution when you have the fox in charge of the hen house? Well, the immediate political solution is a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. The longer term solution is people all over this country saying, we're not going to give up the democracy that has made this country great so that a handful of billionaires can control the political process. We ain't going to allow that to happen. We need public funding of elections, which I think is probably the most important thing we can do politically. Billionaires cannot and should not be allowed to buy elections.